Oh my god. Look at that. Look at just look at it up there. What's up guys? My name is Mirza John D. Hamzig and my YouTube channel name is John D. TV. I'm originally from Bosnia, located in Eastern Europe, but have been living in Phoenix, Arizona on and off for over 10 years. I currently work as a media producer, but in my free time I have many hobbies, including travel vlogs, photography and music. Last year, I got married in Cancun, Mexico. A month later, me and my wife Stephanie, who was born in San Diego but originates from Mexico, boarded a plane and this time our destination was Maui, Hawaii for our honeymoon. I got you. Stand up, I got you. Oh shit, don't come over here. Holy fuck. There's no road, stop. Look, it's just a fucking, it just goes down. I hear the waterfall. Into the abyss. We're here at a, at a random bar here at the airport. And I think I'm pretty drunk. Before our trip even starts, we hit a little snag as our flight from Phoenix to Maui gets delayed four times. Four hours later and as many drinks from the bar with our new friend that we met at the airport, a retired firefighter also traveling to the same location, we finally board the plane to Maui. We arrive late in the afternoon and it takes a few annoying hours to rent our car. And by the time we make it to our hotel for the week, the Fairmont Keilani, it's already around 10 p.m. The crappy thing about this is that we booked the Haleakala Sunrise store on the first night and have to get up at 1.30 in the morning to catch the bus that is picking us up from our hotel, which means three hours of sleep after a six hour plane ride. All right, it's 1.30 in the morning. We're uh, about to go up to Halakala Peak Mountain Volcano. I don't have energy to talk. I don't know what I'm saying. We got like three hours of sleep. We tough it out, catch the bus, and a few hours later are standing in pitch black on top of Haleakala Volcano, freezing our asses off. Before long, the sun slowly starts coming out, and we realize that the whole struggle of doing this was so worth it. <laughs> After sunrise, our real tour kicks off as it's time to get on a bike and pedal down the side of the volcano for 27 miles to the beach of Paia Town. This was an exhilarating ride as we passed forests, diverse landscapes and different smells on our way to the bottom. Surprisingly, you have to keep a pretty fast tempo at times and slower okay. riders will be asked to turn in their bikes and join the trailing van with the supplies if they are too slow. This was the case with Stephanie who was a little scared of the downhill slopes and of going fast. She was on the bike for a few minutes, but spent the majority of the ride in the safety of the van. I understand the need to keep the group going, but they should have given her a little more time to get comfortable. We make a stop in Macabao as we grab some much needed breakfast and Stephanie tries a malasada that she has been told to try here in Maui. Donuts on a stick at Kimoto. Kimono Bakery. That's really good. Right, we got eight more miles to go on our uh, biking tour down Haleakala Peak. So we're stopped at some cowboy town for some grub. So 
of that big old mountain right there, that is where we came from. 27 miles. And we have made it to the beach in Taya Town. Stephanie rode for about five minutes, so. After making it to the beach and after looking back at the top of the mountain we just descended 27 miles from, we get back on the bus and get taken back to our hotel. It's only around 11 a.m. because we got up at 1 and we now still have the whole day in front of us. Back at Keilani, we do some exploring of this awesome resort, grab some food and drinks from the pool bar and go swimming at the beach that is connected to our hotel. The waves here can get pretty rough and high at times as I found out the hard way. We walk the path that connects all the hotels as it offers some beautiful views of the waves crashing on the rocks and it's a nice walk. This trail is best used for morning or late evening jogs. Back at our beach, we rent a canoe and go searching for some giant turtles rumored to be in the area. We don't see any now, but we do run across them when we snorkel later in the trip. For our dinner plans, we decide to go big with Maui's famous and expensive Mama's Fish House located in Paia. I won't get too much into the food as I have a separate video that talks about all the delicious eats in Maui that you can check out in the top right corner. <laughs> but the area around the restaurant was beautiful and we ran into some massive turtles resting on the warm sandy beaches. Back at our hotel and we are absolutely exhausted from the volcano canoe and walking around. It felt like we were up for two days and we almost were. We pop some complimentary hotel champagne and pass out hard. We need the rest to be able to take on the road to Hana early the next morning. Thanks for being the bus driver. Who else is gonna do it? Not me. <laughs> what can I say? I'm the worst driver in the world. The road to Hana was one of the best adventures I have ever had and it was one of the most beautiful places I had ever seen. It was definitely the highlight of our trip and we spent the whole day exploring it from sunrise to deep into the night. Our first stop was a small stand at the start of the road we were looking for some breakfast, but this early in the morning they were only making smoothies, so we grabbed one, checked out the view behind the stand, and continued on our first hike and waterfall. The hardest part about the road to Hana is figuring out where to go next because there was many different paths, hikes, waterfalls, and beautiful locations to find, and there just wasn't enough time to see everything. I strongly suggest you research the trails, follow the mile markers, and see the best sites first. I had a book with everything mapped out and still got lost on a few occasions. Our first hiking adventure here on the road to Hana. We're about to go through some crazy conditions to get through four waterfalls. Our first path was pretty long, probably because we got lost twice and once even circled back without knowing, uh, back to the road. Dude, we're literally back on the road. The path was supposed to take us to four different waterfalls, we made it to two. This was a pretty hard hike as we had to cross steep muddy hills, a flowing river and many mosquito filled forest right, areas. Right there. I started this hike with my normal shoes and actually had to throw them out after this. Definitely like bring shoes. water shoes here mm -hmm. as it will save your life. Why would you bring your nice adidas that are white to hike Hana? I need new shoes anyways. Come on.
finally making it to the first waterfall and taking a dip in its cold waters was the refreshment we needed to refuel in this hot and steamy weather. The second smaller waterfall was located nearby and after swimming in its waters and getting some pictures we head back through the forest to our car parked by the road. After the first hike, we were starving looking for food. We brought a few snacks with us like protein bars and some water but we ended up running into some real food. There was a stand with a guy serving barbecue chicken and bamboo tree trunks with grilled banana and it was crazy delicious. It was hard to find a place to sit here and it was pretty dirty with chickens running around but the experience was unique. We also had some freshly chopped coconut and this all gave us the strength to keep going. There's not many food options on the road to Hana until you actually get to Hana and I'm not sure if barbecued chicken guy will be around when you make it out so definitely come with lots of food and water. Our next stop was a very large and beautiful waterfall that not many tourists know about called Vailua Falls on mile marker 45. You take a random trail through bushes and vines and you continue walking through a very long riverbank. There are huge rocks everywhere and you must maneuver all of this for about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how flexible you are. There is no path so it's very rough terrain. When you finally get here though, it's a sight to behold. I don't see anything. Poor babies. It's like Tomb Raider. It's huge. You see? We gotta get to it now, huh? There are a few black sand beaches on the road to Hana. This one had a really nice view of the surrounding cliffs and of the open ocean ahead. It's located close by the previous waterfall across from it when you get back on the road. We sat down and enjoyed the scenery as there wasn't many people around. If you brought lunch, this would be the ideal location for it. We continue the road to Hana as we pass some cliff jumpers by the what road. What the fuck? Oh, I, fuck that. Along with some waterfalls that you can literally jump into from the highway almost. I recorded them, but we didn't bother getting in the water at this location. Instead, we head up the road to another refreshment, the famous Coconut Glen's Dairy Free Ice Cream Shop. The ice cream lived up to the hype and if you look a little closer you will see that the owner of the shop actually breeds spiders. As creepy as that is, there's many different spiders hanging out on the webs around the shop. They remind me of the spiders scattered around Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Another must-see location on the road to Hana is the Wai Anapanapa State Park. Along the amazing views of cliffs, there is a real black sand beach with very rough waves. There is a lot of people always here, but it's a stunning location with a nearby cave and paths that take you through the water cliffs.
outside Hana are the Venus Pools, another location on everyone's list. It might be confusing to get to as we thought we were in the wrong spot, but this area is beautiful when you find it and a perfect spot for daring cliff jumpers. The cliffs are high above, so don't slip as the ground around here is sloped and can be very slippery. This reminds me that the road to Hana can be wet and rainy one minute and sunny and almost dry the next. We had a pretty good day though and it was mostly sunny with some downcast here and there. The last thing we did right before dark was also one of the most stunning. While looking for other places, we stumble upon a small town off the beaten path. We park our car at a road closure sign and walk over a damaged old bridge with missing planks through gorgeous green scenery. As the sun is going down and it gets darker, the area does get a little creepier as we are the only ones anywhere in sight. But we shortly emerge out of the forest on a cliff overlooking the ocean and witness this spectacular view. We stood here for quite a while, taking in the sights before we left. The next day, we explored the beaches around our hotel and tried to do some snorkeling. You can borrow some snorkeling gear from your hotel, but if you want to go snorkeling on your own, which we later did, you can rent the gear for cheap nearby to the hotel zone, just google snorkel bobs. We were able to find a turtle swimming underneath us here at this location, but nothing else. Snorkeling spots vary, and it all depends on the tide. We checked out McKenna Beach, where I almost get knocked out by another strong wave out of nowhere. Ooh, fuck! Holy shit! We took it easy today, had some drinks and visited a few restaurants in the area. One of the best ones was Monkey Pot that we heard great things about. They had amazing food and the world famous Mai Tais which live up to the hype by the way. Alright, we are at uh, world famous, our Hawaii famous Monkey Pot for their world famous Mai Tais. Try it out. Oh man, that is very strong. Very strong, but it's delicious. Do a two of these and you're fucked. After getting some rest the previous day, it's time to get up early and explore the other part of the island, starting with Lahaina, as we explore the coast looking for good snorkeling spots with our newly rented gear and also a few other spots I researched including the Nakalele blowhole. We stop and check out the banyan tree at the Lahaina banyan court and this tree is massive, it makes for a very cool picture. We also grab some food and continue our adventure. Right outside Lahaina is Black Rock Beach with an awesome cliff to dive off of. It's actually very tricky to get up here as I'm pretty sure I took the long way. But after some struggle I managed to climb the cliff. There was many people jumping off this and it had two height levels. I climbed to the top and it was way higher than I thought but it was too late to back out. The view from this spot was awesome. Drop. 
After this beach, there are many smaller paths around the cliffs by the road. We took a couple, but only found a few good scenic views. We finally make it to the Nakalele blowhole. It's about a 10 minute walk from the road. And right next to it is Instagram's favorite heart-shaped rock, which was Stephanie's favorite picture as well. This is yet another beautiful uh, scenic location. Also, the blowhole doesn't always spit out huge amounts of water, so sit and chill for a little bit, enjoy the views and wait for those huge blowhole explosions. Just stay clear as it can suck you in, it has happened before and there are signs everywhere to avoid getting close to it. The rest of our time on this part of the island was spent on exploring a few beaches and looking for some good snorkeling spots. The snorkeling wasn't that great but we did have fun exploring and I was able to capture some nice shots with the sun starting to go down. Stephanie did warn us that most deaths in Hawaii are from coconuts falling on your head. We managed to survive this dangerous forest that actually had signs up everywhere to watch out for falling coconuts and trees. It also had a spooky sign that pointed out not to go off the trail as there are unmarked graves around. The next day was another chill time where we hung out at our beautiful resort, went swimming at the pools and the beach. In the evening though, we booked ourselves a Hawaii staple, a luau. Maui offers a couple different luau packages and you should check with your hotel for info or you might even book it online to try to get a better price. We got picked up by a shuttle and driven down the road to another resort that hosted our luau. We get fed plenty of delicious food as the sun was going down on the ocean horizon. It was a breathtaking sight and made even grander by the sounds and performances of the evening. They told stories and the unlimited alcohol made it even better. This was a memorable moment we experienced and if you leave Maui or Hawaii for that matter without experiencing a luau, then you are truly missing out. The last thing we did in Maui was visit the Maui Brewery. We booked a cheap tour online and had a beer tasting with many different and unique flavors including coffee and one of our favorites, coconut flavored beer. Sadly, our honeymoon and our week of adventuring in Maui, Hawaii comes to an end. This ended up being one of our very favorite trips and the adventures we had will be remembered for a lifetime and also because I kind of recorded the whole thing. We had days to relax and enjoy our honeymoon together and then we also had days filled with adventure, exploration, sightseeing and tasting its delicious food. The island is small and you can easily get around and experience plenty of what it has to offer but not everything. Maui is a paradise full of rich culture and breathtaking scenery and on our plane back home to Phoenix, we were already talking about coming back. <laughs> <laughs>